This is a sunnah to This is a sunnah to This is a sunnah to الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أنا زينو بنا in this program we are trying to cover those sunnas which are related to the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم because normally when we hear the word sunnah we think of the physical sunnahs the external sunnahs like using a miswak growing the hair in a certain way wearing the imama starting every act permissible act good act with the right hand uh, giving with the right taking with the right etc these are all sunnahs of the prophet ali salam no doubt but they are beautiful and amazing sunnahs that are related to the character the akhlaq the mannerism of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and sadly, these are neglected. Many times we see that Muslims do not act upon these particular sunnahs. Inshallah, with this in mind, we are bringing you these episodes that this is a sunnah too. Don't forget that these are also sunnahs of the Prophet wasallam, and we have to ensure that we are applying them, adopting them in our lives. In this episode, we're going to cover a beautiful sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, which is Fulfilling promises. First of all, we will mention ayat of Al Quran, Al Kareem, in regard to uh, fulfilling promises, the importance, the virtue of fulfilling promises, and then the hadith collection, the ahadith mubarakah, and finally some accounts, inshallah, uh, regarding the fulfilling of promises. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in para 6, Surah Ma'idah, the very first verse. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أوفوا بالعقود that all believers fulfill the promises very straightforward very explicit very clear that all believers fulfill promises and in Surah Bani Israel para 15 verse 34 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ And fulfill the promise. إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا Indeed, the promise will be asked about. Sometimes insan, human believers make promises and they think, who's going to ask me about them? And I'll make the promise right now just to shut up the person, بالله, just to get my way. And who's going to ask me? The Quran is telling us, إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا Indeed, the promise will be asked about. Who will ask? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask. So we have to be very careful. Whenever we make a promise, we make it wholeheartedly, sincerely, with full intention of fulfilling that promise as well. Another verse of the Quran, in para 14, Surah Nahal, verse 91. Allah jalla wa ala says, وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ إِذَا عَاهَدْتُمْ and fulfill the promise of Allah when you make a promise. Now these verses of the Quran all speak about fulfilling promises. This is how important and significant in Islam it is. Many, you shouldn't just make promises uh, for the sake of it without any intention to fulfill them or just for any personal advantage or benefit at that particular time. Someone asks you, uh, will you do this? If I were to do this for you, and you say, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. But you have no intention to fulfill that promise. And this is not right. This is un-Islamic. This goes against the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. Let us go to the hadith collection. The first hadith, Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, is the rabi, is the narrator. Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, is the khadim of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Anas bin Malik. He stayed for 10 years in the company of Rasulullah There's It's a famous hadith where he says, during that time, the Prophet ﷺ did not scold me. The Prophet ﷺ did not scold me during that time. SubhanAllah. This was the blessed that of Rasulullah ﷺ. Today, someone spends half an hour in our company and he may have reason to complain. Sayyidun Anas spent 10 years in the company of Rasulullah 
no reason whatsoever to complain. How could he? He was with the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidul Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that the Prophet alayhi salam said, when you speak, speak in a good manner. Whenever you speak, speak in a good manner. When someone else is conversing and speaking, you're present, then you should listen attentively, listen in a good manner. Whenever you meet someone, meet them in a smiling manner. Meet them smilingly. And fulfilling promises is from the akhlaq of the believers. Allahu Akbar Kabira. What was mentioned in this hadith? Four things. Number one, when you speak, speak in a good manner. When you are listening to someone speaking, someone conversing, listen attentively. Again, listen in a good manner. When you meet someone, meet them smiling. Meet them in a nice way. It doesn't cost to smile. This is also a form of sadaqah. In one hadith, we're told that smiling in the face of your brother, this is sadaqah as well. And lastly, the hadith told us, instructed us, that fulfilling promises is from the akhlaq of the believers. Allahu Akbar. We are believers, alhamdulillah. From our akhlaq, this should be evident, fulfilling promises. If it's not evident, we are weak in our faith. And we need to ensure that we're strengthening our faith. And we're adopting and abiding by all of those akhlaq that should be within a believer. And in this hadith, we're told that fulfilling promises is from the akhlaq of a believer. Another narration, Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu anh states that prior to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam announcing his nubuwa, his prophethood, I purchased something from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I, I had a transaction. A trade transaction with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and in regard to the transaction this Sahabi says that I owed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi sallam something and I said that I will come to this very location to give you your remaining amount the outstanding payment whatever I need to give you I will give it to you at this location meaning where the Prophet alaihi sallam was he then states I forgot I forgot to fulfill that promise. Three days had passed. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Three days passed in this day. I forgot. And when I remembered, I went back to the exact same spot. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is at that same place. And the Prophet Sallallahu said to this uh, blessed individual who became a Sahabi, that you placed me into difficulty. I've been waiting here for three days for you. You placed me into difficulty. So, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ was truthful. It shows from this account, he was very honest. The second thing that ulama have mentioned is that when Sayyidina Abdullah said that I will bring your remaining amount at this very spot, to this very location, please meet me at this very place, the Prophet ﷺ accepted that. So, the acceptance of this statement that I will meet you here was from the Prophet ﷺ. So he promised that person, I will meet you here. The acceptance was from the side of Rasulullah ﷺ. The Kabul was from the jiha, the aspect of the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, there can be no objection. Someone might think, where is the promise in this hadith? This was the promise. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ accepted that. When the companion Sayyidina Abdullah said, I will meet you here, the Prophet ﷺ said yes. Meaning, I will meet you here also. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained there. This is how he fulfilled his promise, subhanAllah. And thirdly, it should not be misunderstood that the Prophet ﷺ was waiting there for three days for money or for goods or for worldly possessions. No, that didn't interest the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know from various other narrations that he could have lived a life of a king, but he chose not to. And the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stayed at that maqam, stayed at that place, is to fulfill his promise. Allahu Akbar Kabira, to fulfill the promise that he made to that person, I will meet you here as well. Meaning the wealth could have been obtained from the, the home of that person. The Prophet ﷺ could have went to his home and said, you mentioned that you will give me the goods and I've been waiting, you didn't come, so I've come to your house. No, the Prophet ﷺ stayed there, which shows that his only reason for staying there was to fulfill the promise. The Quran tells us about fulfilling promises. The Prophet ﷺ acts upon the Quran more than anyone else. And telling the truth, Fulfilling promises, this is from the sunnah of all Anbiya alayhi salatu 
what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say regarding Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? Wa Ibrahim alladhi waffa. And Ibrahim, the one who fulfills the promise. And for Ismail alayhi salam, he said, Kana sadiq al wa'd. That Ismail alayhi salam was truthful in promise, meaning in fulfilling the promise. Let us now hear an account, subhanAllah, of our elders, our pious predecessors. Sayyiduna Tariq bin Abdullah radiallahu and he narrates We came to Al Madinatul Munawwara. We saw a person who was wearing two cloaks, two pieces of cloth, two cloaks. He gave salam to us and he asked, Where are you intended to go? So he said, Al Madina. He asked, What is the purpose of you coming here? We said, we have come to obtain the dates of this land and he mentioned how they have one animal as a ride one camel and they have a rain they placed a rain around that camel as well and they also mentioned that they have another camel a red camel that person said will you sell this red camel Sayyiduna Tariq bin Abdullah radiallahu anh says we will sell it but only in exchange for this amount of dates. So he mentioned uh, an amount of dates. The person who inquired, that person did not ask for a reduction in the price, didn't bargain. He took the, the camel by the reins and left. When he disappeared, Sayyiduna Tariq bin Abdullah radiallahu anh says, we began to say to one another, what have we just done? We've given the camel over, but we haven't received payment. He's an unknown person. We don't know him. We're not acquainted with him. Taken the animal, he hasn't paid us. And he says, that's when a woman who was part of the group, the Qafila, she says, why are you rebuking one another? By Allah, a person with such an appearance cannot deceive you. This is what she said. He will not deceive you. I saw his face, it was brighter than the moon on the 14th night. Brighter than the moon on the 14th night. I am a guarantor for the price that he was supposed to pay for the camel. He says, he says, I guarantee to give you that price, whatever happened. Whilst we were conversing, the narrator Sayyidina Tariq bin Abdullah radiallahu anh, says, whilst we were conversing, a person came and he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent me and these dates belong to you. Meaning a person was sent by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with those dates that were agreed. Subhanallah. Eat to your fill. This is what the person who was sent by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said. Eat to your fill. And once you've ate to your fill, that's when you are to weigh them and take as much as was agreed. Allahu Akbar Kabira. What does this mean? That when you eat to your fill, that's not part of the agreement. That's just the generosity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Whatever extra that you've ate, you will not be accountable for that. Once you've all ate to your fill, take how much was agreed and you may continue. Meaning this was the generosity of the Prophet alayhi wa He gave more than the amount that was promised, initially promised. This is the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. We are his ummah. We have to follow him in this regard. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would fulfill his, his oath, would fulfill his promises, subhanAllah. This is a beautiful example of that as well. And one of our awliya kamirin, Sayyiduna Sari Sakti rahmatullahi alayhi, it was his habit. Whenever he would sell something, he would not take more than three dinar in profit. Subhanallah. Once he bought 96 sa'a, it's a massive amount, 96 sa'a, which is a, an amount in Arabic, of almonds. He purchased them for 60 dinar. He went to the marketplace and announced that they are for sale. And when a person came to buy them, a businessman, a tajir, he said, what's the cost? He said, 63 dinar. 96 saw, a great amount of almonds. He bought it for 60 dinar, sold it for 63 to that business. This was the way of our aslaf. And when they would uh, promise something and even make a promise with themselves, they would not go against that promise. This was a brief discussion on the importance of fulfilling promises. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq to fulfill our promises for the sake of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
آمین بجاہ نبی الامین صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم